Before the pandemic, about 23% of people worked off-site at least part of the time. Since the pandemic, whoa, that number has increased to maybe 90% for most people. And yet it creates this problem, which we're going to explore in today's episode. How do you manage remote employees? Today I want to cover five areas that will truly help you when it comes to managing remote employees. Stay tuned because I believe one or two of them may be quite surprising. When it comes to managing remote employees, the first of the five areas that I'd like to explore is how that experience is hitting each of your employees very differently. I know in working with various companies in the past year, that I have chatted with different uh, leaders and managers and it's been interesting hearing their stories and how this experience has impacted people very, very differently. Some people, first of all, are single, they're home alone. And so what they've been able to do is really dive into their work without any disruptions and in many ways they're enjoying the experience of remote work. For others who are single, they've found it incredibly a lonely experience and they're craving for connection with other people. And so they're finding the whole experience very difficult. Others find themselves in this situation with families. They have spouses and children. And so they're trying to navigate this new remote workspace and also balance dealing with perhaps children who are not going to school because they have to be homeschooled. All of that is such a new experience. And so it can be incredibly stressful. For others, they're finding it wonderful. I was talking to an employee a few weeks ago. He said, you know, it's just so wonderful that I know that I'm working and in the room next door are two of my kids and in five minutes I can get out of the room, go in and play with them and then come back to the meeting. All of us are adapting very differently to this new situation. And so when it comes to managing remote employees, we can't paint the same brush on everyone. We need to make sure that we're having conversations and we're getting to know individual circumstances and how this situation is impacting them, impacting their mood, impacting their emotions, and impacting their work situation. The second area is to define expectations. And so as we move from the physical place of work into a remote experience, we also have to, in some way, look at the expectations we have especially around communication, especially around turnover of projects, especially around perhaps say what the workday looks like. You know, very often I find that these were missing conversations and because they were missing conversations, they also led to some misunderstandings. And so I would suggest have some clarifying conversations around expectations expectations of when people are going to communicate, expectations of when they're supposed to be on the clock and working, expectations around when they're supposed to be available for video talks, etc. All of that needs to be clarified because if it's not clarified, it can lead to problems as we deal with remote employees. The third area is take time to build rapport. It's kind of like building on the first area we spoke about. This uh, situation is impacting everyone differently. And one of the things that we have lost from the world of a physical workplace where we went to was these wonderful opportunities that we had for small brief conversations and check-ins at the water cooler or in the snack bar or just outside the building going for a quick walk. And we need to be able to build into the workday some touch points where we're able to check in with the person. Because the problem is more often than not is the only time that we meet people is during formal meetings and so we lose some of these informal encounters. So really begin to explore how can I build in some informal exploration, some informal conversations with people. Maybe it's just uh, checking in, giving people phone calls, just checking in how their day is going without people feeling that you're checking in to see if they're working or not, but rather introduce moments where in all reality, all you're doing is just letting people know that you're available, that you're listening, and that you're there for them if they need you. Area number four is the use of video. 
You see, when people are remote, we cannot see them. When you are in person having a meeting, there's a number of signals that are coming to us from a person's body language. It's not just the words that they are saying, it's how they are saying the words and then the body language around those words. If we don't have that information, then we are critically losing a valuable source of data that can help us truly interpret what a person is thinking and feeling. So when it comes to remote employees, it's critically important that when we have meetings, one-on-one -on -one meetings, team meetings, or especially meetings when we're discussing perhaps problems with that employee, that we are using video because video will help us see the facial expressions. They'll help us see some of the body language that the person has. We'll be able to see if there's a disconnect between some of the words and perhaps some of the things that we are seeing on the screen. We'll get to see if they are avoiding eye contact. All of this provides critical information when it comes to managing remote employees. Area number five is to build in perhaps longer one-on-ones. You know, one of the things that we've already mentioned is that in a physical workplace, we bump into people every now and again. We have multiple touch points during the day. Much of that is taken away in a virtual setting. And so therefore, when we're managing remote employees, it's very useful to add some extra time that we can really touch base one-on-one -on -one with those for whom we are supervising. It's also a wonderful time and an opportunity to ask some really great questions. Part of that question should be around, how are they adjusting to the remote space? What makes the remote space perhaps more difficult or challenging what perhaps makes it more enjoyable or fun as well for some people there is a balance there but that one-on-one -on -one time truly helps us get to know the person a little bit better and gets to know their unique needs as I've already expressed everyone's situation at home is different and their challenges are different our expectation of a person who is single needs to be a little bit different perhaps from a person who is dealing with some children who perhaps might have to be schooled at home this week. All of that allows for us to be a little more flexible in how we are supervising and managing that person. If there's one thing we know it is this, remote is here to stay. And so we have to become more accustomed in dealing with employees, in remote employees, remote workflow. And hopefully the five areas that we've covered today will truly help you. If you would like more suggestions, more free tools, I invite you to go to my website, irvinnugent.com, and there's a free resources page there packed with different things that you might be able to use in the remote workspace. Also, if you've enjoyed this video, I invite you to watch the next video, which talks about improving your relationship with your boss.